So it looks like we're not going to be having a Transformer Tuesday today from Hasbro. Looks like they gave us uh, just enough to keep us busy last week. So we're going to jump into a Transformer Slag podcast Patreon listener question instead. Have a nice discussion today. Uh, once again, if you want to be part of the Transformer Slag podcast Patreon, help support the podcast. Let us know we're doing a half decent job here in the Transformer world keeping you entertained and informed on everything going on in our beautiful little brand that is the Robots in Disguise. Again, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or the description below. What does it get you? If you join the Patreon, it gets your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward. Access to our exclusive Discord where we share the news, share lore, and of course, share sales. Save money on your hobby very good Discord. Cool stuff going on there. Always cool people to hang out with and have good discussions. Nice community that we built there. And of course, more importantly, depending on what tier, you get a little something-something in the mail. Also, recently we've been uh, doing some giveaways on the uh, the, the uh, Patreons. We've been pretty much randomly picking people and sending them some stuff. Also, during the, the live streams, we've been doing them in the past. So if you're part of the Patreon, you get... Also, an opportunity to get some free merch, some free Transformer stuff with our contests and everything. And, of course, depending on what tier, little something-something may be sent in the mail when we have little giveaways and stuff. And, of course, access to the Patreon listener question. We have a Patreon listener question from longtime patron Space Ghostal. And Space Ghostal wants to know he's going to keep it short and sweet. Hey, Proto Man, do you think we will ever get true Triple Changer versions of Transformers, Bumblebee movie, Shatter, and Dropkick, maybe even Masterpiece versions, keep up Prime's work, Space Ghostal. Thank you, Space Ghostal. Um, You know, like, these these guys, man, both of them, like, they have such a weird toy history already. Like, they did those, like, let's ignore the Bumblebee movie line itself, like that one that was made more just with gimmicks and everything, and all of those characters just had one-sided, very simple toys. When we look at Studio Series and how they approached both Shatter and Dropkick, it's pretty much like those those guys would have to be MPs in order to to get anything. Like Shatter, I mean, with her, it's like they, they tried doing an individual car mode and there was all kinds of QC issues. Then they did the individual jet mode with with uh, Studio Series, and there was all kinds of QC issues. It was so weird. And that was like just having to deal with one alt mode in a deluxe class price point, and there was still kind of like, oh my goodness, this is a problem, that's a problem. And Studio Series is all about scale, too. So you could say, well, if you up, if you up the scale to Voyager or Leader class, then maybe they'll have the more parts and pieces to pull it off. Now nah, that probably won't happen then, you know, so it's it's something that was a bit of a headache with her. And I mean, Dropkick is a mess. Like Dropkick, it was like the the deluxe class one that turned just into a helicopter. Not only did it also have its own problems, not only was it actually like a, a repaint retool of just the Studio Series Drift on top of that. So it wasn't really even its own mold. Uh, not only does Dropkick have all kinds of weird idiosyncrasies when it comes to his helicopter that he turns into because his animation model has like like four propellers, but the actual helicopter itself has has only two. So that's like, oh, they're going to have to tool some kind of crazy optical illusion to pull that off. And not, not to mention that, that, at least in my personal experience, um, that Dropkick, the helicopter one, w- did not sell well. It was like, like, shelf warming in walmarts forever like there were so many of those ones and of course it had its own little problems it had all kinds of little like qc issues and again even the deluxe class car version of him same thing now a lot of these they actually managed to get away with you know having these toys and not having to do much with them afterwards as mold because i believe both car versions got reissued in the buzzworthy bumblebee line i know that the shatter one uh, was actually in a two-pack I believe it was, or no, it wasn't the Shatter. I think it was the Dropkick, the car version, was in a two-pack with Buzzworthy Bumblebee with the Volkswagen Studio Series one. But, I mean, these characters, when you have triple changers, you just you hit this wall where you have to have the right price point to pull it off. So, historically, a lot of triple changers in recent years have been, you know, leaning more into that of the Voyager and Leader class now. Obviously, back then, they were like, oh, we could, you know, when Classics first started in 2006 and the budget and the plastic was still there and available, 
It's like, yeah, we could pull off this little astro train and maybe do something like that. But as time progressed, it just became more and more difficult. And it was just like, hey, you want to do a sandstorm? You want to do a springer? You want to do a, you know, a, uh, a blitzwing or anyone like that? It's like they got to go up those price points. They got to make it bigger and bigger just to have the parts and pieces then pull it off and make it look half decent. And even then it sometimes doesn't even look that great, you know? So anything that's going to be to scale with Studio Series is going to be a failure because that car mode that has to be to scale is going to have to be a deluxe class. And I don't know how they'd be able to figure it out while keeping the scale. So that falls into your second suggestion here, Space Coastal, Masterpiece. That's probably the only way I could ever see it happening. I mean, the one good thing is it can exist. And I will say why, because... There was a third-party company, I believe it was called Toy World, correct me if I'm wrong. They showed these prototypes of Shatter being able to be a triple changer and have a good-looking robot mode. Like, nothing was really spared uh, in order to pull it off. It was a T Toy World TF, T I think it was called TWF04 and 05, something like that. And then they were just called Shatter and Dropkick. They didn't even bother with third party names but those like they just ended up in limbo like i i've yet to see them because tfcon always keeps us up to date uh with the prototypes and everything that are brought to the convention for the glass displays and i've yet to see a final version of that and it's been what two three years now it's kind of in limbo now maybe because the demand isn't there and no one really wants like full ones or maybe maybe masterpiece versions are on their way and there's no point to do the third party ones who knows but i think masterpiece is the only way that it could exist like in term like retail versions, oh, I don't know. I just don't think the money is there. Like Masterpiece would be the only way, but the question is, with the limited slots that Masterpiece has, with a new, you know, Rise of the Beast movie coming out, that's obviously gonna take some of those slots too, with a whole bunch of characters. Look, the Bumblebee movie came. They did a masterpiece movie Bumblebee. And that's it. And the and the Bumblebee movie was was pretty limited pretty limited in terms of characters obviously you have the optimus prime yeah that's true too but i'm saying in terms of the core cast itself i'm surprised that you know you had bumblebee you had uh shatter and you had dropkick that's pretty much the core cast anyone else that happened with those cybertronian scenes and stuff like that and optimus showing up at the end that's just side stuff but yet only two bumblebee masterpiece movie masterpieces were made out of that and it was just the two Autobots and, you know, that's it. They didn't bother with anything else. So the fact that they didn't make an effort to even make a Shatter or even entertain the idea or make a, uh, a Dropkick, even though they probably obviously wanted to sell you guys on the Studio Series first and then do them later, I don't know, it'll probably take a few years before we see those characters. Because, again, with Rise of the Beast right around the corner, they're definitely going to do some stuff there with MPM. And then whatever they want to do afterwards, I don't know. You know, there's there's still Revenge of the Fallen stuff they'd like to finish. There's certain characters that haven't gotten masterpiece versions from the 2007 movie that are Decepticons. I mean, it's it's really something where does Takara Tomy want to do a Shatter, which or a Dropkick, which historically has not been selling well as characters, or do they want to do a movie 2007 Bone Crusher, you know, which might have a better market for that because the 2007 movie has a lot of nostalgia and weight with it. So who knows? Who knows? But I mean, it's one way to look at it, but I think Masterpiece would probably be the only route that would work outside of obviously whatever third party will do. And even then it kind of looks like they kind of backed away from it. But that's my take. What is your take? Do you think it would happen? I don't know. I mean, again, third, like, like triple changers are always difficult, let alone six changers and everything like that. But triple changers are always difficult because it's like, what do you do with that mold afterwards? There's not much you could do with it. And it's a lot of tooling, a lot of engineering. Now it's got to be larger price points just to make it look half decent. So you end up with a whole bunch of issues. And if your triple changer turns into a car right away, it's like, well, that's not going to scale. <laughs> you know, look at look at Springer and his oversized whatevers or, you know, uh, you know, Sandstorm now with those Voyager price points. For, for the alt modes and stuff. So, I mean, it, it probably could be done with the right tooling. You know, you get a really good masterpiece engineer on there, like a Hasui-san or something, but we'll see what happens. We'll see, but I, I wouldn't bank on those two getting a masterpiece anytime soon, especially, again, with the looming of other Transformer movies and other characters that I feel are still probably upper on the card to be done. 
Uh, I mean, if someone, if out of nowhere they said, hey, we're doing Masterpiece Shatter, I would be shocked. I mean, of the two, I think Shatter would probably be the one that would have more weight to actually get something done and probably would be the popular of the two. But at the same time, like, oof, like, really? They're going to do Shatter in, in 2022 or 2023? I doubt that. Maybe in 2025. Who knows? Or maybe for like an anniversary for the Bumblebee movie or something. You know, maybe if they do something like that, you know, they'll do a, uh, I don't know, like a, you know, in 2028, they'll do a 10th anniversary uh, Bumblebee movie shatter masterpiece. Who knows? But anyways, if you want to be like Space Ghostal and ask a awesome Patreon listener question, it opens up a lot of debate with stuff like this. Again, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pin comment or the description below. And like I always say, rock out with the robots in disguise.